that I can already see is looked at as like parental alienation. You know what that is? Parental alienation? No. It's when you're in your taking steps to alienate the children from the father by... special guest. This gentleman is an expert in CPS law. Uh, his name is Paul Wallen. Paul, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Paul, it's so good to have you on the show. Um, I know some people will want to uh, ask you questions, and uh, hopefully you can give them some insight and an advice. But before, sure. we do, but before we do that, if I'm a listener and I want to say, hey, I want to talk to Paul. Paul, how can they get in touch with you? Um, they can call toll-free, 877-466-5245. Um, um, that is our uh, toll-free number. We have offices throughout Southern California, but that number goes to our main office. And if you want to speak to me about any child dependency case on the phone, um, there's no charge ever, and I'll give you free advice. And... Whether you like it or not, I'll give you the truth. And sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. Um, sometimes they're buried deep into their case, and they should have hired a lawyer two years ago, and there's not much we can do for them. Other times we can. But if you're going to call my office, not only will it be free, but it will be refreshing only in that it will be the absolute truth. Very good. Paul, you've been practicing a number of years like myself. How many years have you been doing this? I hate to admit it. Well, if you if you multi, if you go from set twenty three plus twenty one, forty three years. Wow, you got me. Yeah, I look way I look way younger than that. Right. Joking. <laughs> you know, I noticed, Paul, you have a YouTube channel like I do. Um, uh huh. What's the name of your YouTube channel that our listeners can go to and watch some of your videos? Um, I think good question. But one of the reasons when you're old like me and you have a marketing person, um, I think it's WK Law. You know, I think you're right. But you know, yeah, I think it's WK Law. That's right, WK Law. What, what, this, what the listeners can also do is they can also go to YouTube.com and in the search um, bar put in your name. Spell your last name for us, Paul. W-A-L-L-I-N. And that, will take you, that search will take you right to his YouTube channel. Sure. Hey, Paul, let's take a call. Um, let's talk to Destiny from uh, California. Destiny, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Destiny? Okay, I'm sorry, Destiny's not there. Um, I'm trying to get another California call for you, Paul. There's Chris from California. Chris, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? I have both. Um, so I have a CPS case that's been now open. I uh, just met the one-year mark in February. Mm -hmm. um, the case was just open. It was an exchange between the father and I, who was my uh, husband at the time. Um, we are planning a divorce. Anyway, there was a domestic violence incident. Um, the police opened up and called um, CPS thereafter that case. Um, so initially, the children were removed from his care um, because of the domestic violence claim. Um, he was granted visits overnights and so forth. Um, once we had the um, trial with the judge, the judge removed the overnight visits and returned it to um, just daily visits unmonitored um, along with drug testing and so forth for the father because he admitted to marijuana usage. Um, at that time, thereafter, the, um, the father, from the beginning, once they started the initial uh, visit, all the way through when the judge changed it to daily visits, um, the father continuously canceled visits. He refused to come on time for visits. Um, and because of this, I just, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't allow it. I let him know, like, you can't do this. You have to come on time and so forth. Nonetheless, 
he um, went to the judge and had walk-on claims and said that I wasn't following the order um, as far as visitation. So the judge initially believed him, um, and from that they allowed um, they allowed him to take to take over, and basically they took the children from my care because he made these false allegations that I wasn't compliant with the, the visitation orders. Um, along with that, there was a point where I became uh, very ill, um, and the CPS, the social workers, they um, couldn't see the children for about two months because I was so ill along with the children. Um, and again, with this, they gave them more ammunition to uh, make a case where they um, they filed a warrant and basically had the children taken out of my custody at that point. And now they're um, starting the case over basically with me having supervised visits as a mother. And um, I guess it will proceed from there. Um, my concern is that the father from the beginning, he's basically been out of the picture, always traveling, leaving the children behind, and they've always been in my care. Um, the father's been using drugs and so forth all of this time. And he's also on anger management, drug order, uh, drug testing, and has refused those things. Um, and I just don't know what to do at this point to regain custody. Um, okay, hold to on. regain custody of wow. children. Chris, hold on a second. And then the other, the other Chris. issue is that the social worker, she's been given priority to the father, um, knowing that he doesn't have a full-time job. I do knowing that the father has canceled visits and is making every, every excuse, she still gives him priority treatment in all of this case. And I just don't know if I should change social workers at this point, and then what should I do to regain primary custody of the children? Okay, Paul, what can you yeah, do, Chris? I got to unpack a lot of that there. First sorry. of all, first of all, no, that's okay. You're living it, and I feel very sorry you're living it. Your first error in judgment was deciding that – you were not going to let him see the kids per the court order when he was being late. You didn't go back to court and get a court order to say we're going to change that because obviously that gave him an opening. What you've done in this case, which is unfortunately common, too common, is you've taken a case where the father was the primary person that was doing bad things, and you've now converted it to a case where you are looked at as the person because of conduct that... I can already see is looked at as like parental alienation. You know what that is? Parental alienation? No. It's when you're, and you're taking steps to alienate the children from the father by not giving him visitation in violation of a court order, by, according to them, saying, I'm too sick for two months to have the children see their father. I'm sure they're oh. saying, excuse my French, I'm sure they're saying that your version of events is not true, it's crap, and they're claiming that you denied the father access when you really didn't have medical proof or something like that. It, that's what they're saying, right? Well, not necessarily, but even I gave them proof because the father kept telling me, I, like, I'm a healthcare worker, so I have to work 12 hours. I had text messages of him saying, I'm not coming at 6 a.m., he said, um, I won't be there next week. He would say, I'm going to see them once they get older. Don't worry about it. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know what else to do at that point. I still have to keep my job. I Eventually, I got written up by my job because I had excessive call-offs to allow him to still see the, to see the children. I know, ma'am. Ma ma the problem is, yeah. ma the problem is you did not get the direction from the Department of Children's Services, the social worker, before you made those decisions. You might have felt they were totally in the best interest of your child, but what you don't understand is when a petition is filed and you're in the, in the middle of a dependency case, you're no longer making the choice decisions. Those decisions are taken from you until the case is over and you're given legal custody again. That's why the county had custody and they're telling you what you do and you, for whatever, I know you had the best interest of your children at heart, but what you did pissed off the social worker and pissed off the judge. Mm -hmm. And you know that there was a hearing, and you just said they took the kids with a warrant out of your house. That's very serious stuff. That means they yeah. got to the point where they're claiming they couldn't contact you, and they had to get a warrant to take the kids away. That's like a big black mark in your file now that you're going to have mm -hmm. to dig out from. Now, how do you dig out from that? And you also said, I, I, I want to switch social workers. Well, you can't just switch social workers. You don't have the control to, quote, just switch social workers. 
unless you can somehow show that the social worker is biased or prejudiced against you in the eyes of the court, this is the social worker you have. So my best advice to you would be to, I want to say, may you know, like, cop out to what you did. Because I don't know what, look, you obviously love your kids. You obviously, the court thought you were a, a good provider for your children. You obviously are a hard worker. But when you started doing things that the court didn't, they either you knew or should have known, you just couldn't do voluntarily. That's what's got you in this jackpot, right? Right. Understood. Right. So now the only thing you can do, in my opinion, is to do the stuff they're telling you to do. But now what have they told you to do? Go to therapy? What? Right. Well, that's the thing I've done from the from the initial case plan. I've done everything that has been requested of me. I've been in the individual therapy, group counseling, the co-therapy with the children. That's all that was required of me on our case plan. I've done those things. I presented the okay. cert- certification to the judge, but this was still. Hey, Chris, let me jump yeah. in. Let me jump in for a second, Paul. Sure. Uh, Chris, did you get Paul's telephone number? Yes, I did. Okay. We got to take a break right now, but I want you to call him tomorrow and continue this conversation. And I think he might be able to help you uh, see this case a little differently so that you can succeed at what you want. Chris, I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Call us back in about three or four weeks and tell us, you know, give us an update. Okay, we're going to take some a break right now. This is the secret how to fight child right now. This is the secret how to fight child protective services and when. And we'll be right back after.